Welcome to the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. Welcome to the Prog Talks, an interview series by the Prog Space where we will be talking to musicians in all corners of the progressive music scene. Welcome back to the Prog Talks. Once again, it's me, Uncle Prog, and today I'm happy because I have a young UK musician, uh, which I've been listening a lot to her recent release over the last month, and it's Grace Hayhurst. Good to see you, Grace. How are you? Hey, yeah, good. Thanks. Good to see you too. Yeah, like I mentioned, I've been listening a ton to your uh, EP, uh, Existence is Temporary, over the last month. So uh, now that you have a little bit of hindsight on it, uh, how has the response been? Uh, have you had any feedback? How do you feel about it? Yeah, great, really good. Um, it's my first kind of attempt at trying to release music properly. Uh, I've like done a couple of little random singles in the past, but this has been like, it's like, right, you know, I'm going to do it properly. I'm going to go through everything. You know, I'm going to try and promote it. I'm going to you know do music videos. I'm going to get it mixed by someone that knows what they're doing. Um, and it's been great. It's been really enjoyable to go through that whole process. Uh, lots of learning, which has been good. And uh, yeah, the response has been great. It's uh, more than I would have imagined. You know, I was expecting, all right, maybe like a couple hundred, you know, a couple hundred plays on YouTube and that's kind of, mm. you know, it will die down. But um, no, we're kind of hitting the thousands and it's like, this is, this is a bit surreal. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, lots of positive feedback. People have been enjoying it, which is, uh, which is great, you know. It's, uh, it's definitely always a worry as a solo musician because you've not got anyone to bounce off of and be like, is this is this any good? Like, is this is this all right? Is this okay? Or is this so to have that kind of reassurance that what I'm doing, people are liking, um, is good. Yeah, I can imagine. And and you touched on something that I wanted to ans- ans- uh, to to ask you about. So I'm just gonna move on to that because you were talking about you know all that stuff that you are doing with the videos, with the promotion, everything, and and you know uh, with the social media uh, part of it, and and you know marketing your own uh, stuff. You know, so I was I was wondering, you know, what was your strategy to try and push that music out there and what are the challenges do you feel to to being heard or, or recognized as an individual artist i think i've seen over the years um through friends and musicians i've seen them put out like a, you know a 20 30 minute ep on soundcloud and then just never really say anything about it and yeah. you've got to like ask me like have you done anything recently and they're like oh i did this thing like that. and it's great but mm. they're just not very good at t- talking about it um so i've tried to yeah just make sure i'm like talking to as many people as possible um that are interested of course you know um about the ep and about what it's about um and part of that's come with just the people i've worked with Mm. um you know i've I've worked with uh gareth from slice the cake i've worked with shelby from kairos on some of the video stuff so there's a whole like ecosystem of uh people behind the scenes in the in the scene i guess who are you know a few rungs up the ladder uh above me that already have some ridiculously good music out there um and it's kind of been fun working with those people i'm kind of just pulling myself into the scene and introducing myself to people and i think that's yeah. been very important that kind of networking side of things um you know particularly so as well i've been working with uh, invicta media so Sherry behind that has uh, helped with all the promotion and PR. You know, she put together a great press pack and was like, send me out to all these places. And I'm like, I've never even heard of half these websites. Um, but, you know, people are coming back and saying, oh, this is great. And, you know, putting out reviews and asking for interviews and all stuff. So it's 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 just, yeah, it's kicked off. Um, and yeah, that's that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think you... I see your name like showing up a lot of places, you know, in different, you know, all across from Discord, from Reddit, from, you know, all kinds of different places. And uh, so I think you are sort of doing a good job on that. And because, you know, someone like me who who sort of looks for new music all the time, I had no problem in finding your stuff. While on the other hand, there was 
another young UK musician that I played on my latest radio show and that I just found like out of nowhere and I contacted him and I was like, you know, would you mind sending me some a promo for your album? And I, I'd love to play it on the radio. And the guy was like, what's a promo? What do you need? So <laughs> the, 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 then I guess, you know, it's it's it is can be difficult and and would you say a little bit about the different platforms and you've been using and 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 what do you find valuable and maybe some of them are not so valuable i don't know sure yeah so i've tried uh, a bunch of different avenues and some of it's been based on my work in the podcast industry because i used to work for a podcast hosting platform for a few years oh really um yeah, so partly on the recording side. Um, so I work with, with like a bunch of UK comedians to record a lot of their podcasts um, and some other celebrities and also in the technical side of it and just kind of being a little bit all over the place because it's quite a small, small little house um, and seeing basically like the most important thing is like cross collaboration and like just talking to other people that are doing similar things. Um, and that's kind of, you know you've got to find out where people are that want to listen to your music and this is my problem for like the longest time you know i've been going to prog shows for years yeah you know i've got i think yeah i'm let's see <laughs> the big book of <laughs> ticket stubs <I> love <laughs> and photos and all sorts of stuff yeah yeah this is one of my lockdown projects to uh to keep it up to date and yeah there's the just all sorts of stuff in there you know you've got Devon Townsend and everything. And I was I was going to all these shows. And I'm like, there's all these people out there that love this yeah. music. Where are they? Exactly. I've got no idea. Um, and just trying to find those people <laughs> is uh, a headache in itself. Um, you know, I know people that have had success through like joining Facebook groups. Uh, I know there's a lot of different like Facebook pages and stuff like that. Um, and also on Reddit, there's a handful of little specific niche genre pages for like all yeah. the different you know sludge metal thrash metal prog metal you know all the different kind of places um and then discord has been huge i think for me the last year um it was something i was on the platform like five six years ago with a few mates and i was like oh if i put like if i put any more time into this like i'm just going to be glued to my computer and yeah. i'm not going to do anything else and i'm going to stop seeing people and i was like no i'm not going to do that uh i'm going to go out and you know leave the digital life behind a little bit uh and then the pandemic happened and everything shut down so i was like well maybe i'll revisit that idea then um and yeah ended up just chatting to people on there and there's a whole host of different places and communities you know specific for bands specific for genres um you know the images and words uh prog discord has kind yes. of opened up a big room of of people um and it, i just wouldn't you know without that i probably wouldn't be here you know not only was it incredibly motivating being around a bunch of hard-working musicians but also you know the people there have been incredibly helpful as well so like it was through that i found gareth who mixed the ep and jonas who mastered it and mm. shelby who helped with the video stuff and sherry that helped with the pr and just you know and all of these different people along the way that you know you post a demo and be like is any good and get a bit of feedback so there's like just a whole these people exist <laughs> and they're out there you just got to find yeah. them. You know? Yeah, I, I I agree because you know it can be easy to feel like you're in a like a, <laughs> a vacuum without every anything going on around. But then once you reach out, and I feel like Discord is something that, of course, originally was more or less like a gaming platform, I guess. But but it has exploded into any every other like hobbies and facets of yeah both professional and not so I, I i think that's that's interesting i found that uh, the images and words discord very 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 active and very interesting you know let's go let, let's go uh, over to talk a little bit about the ep because of course uh i read that it it says that is a musical representation of an existential crisis that you experienced so uh, could you tell me a little bit about the, the music on the ep and the overarching team or concept or what you would call it yeah no absolutely so kind of which i think time's not real anymore you know i've been inside for two years but um yeah i think it was 2018 around um i started to kind of struggle a little bit and i was like 
what are you doing? Like, what, mm. what is this? What am I? Like, what, what's what, what's going on? Like, why does anything matter? You know, does it matter if my parents die? Well, no, they're just like weird fleshy objects of cells and like they're not nothing's going to exist in a thousand years and, and don't think about that too much um <laughs> like i did and that kind of uh yeah sent me on a weird spiral of uh trying to work out like just what on earth am i doing um still don't know <laughs> but um i did want to encapsulate some of that into a physical piece of art because i think one of the most important things for me is being remembered after I die to get, you know, nice and nice and cheery. Um, and, you know, from a young age, you know, I've always been doing music stuff. You know, I've been playing piano and French horns since like five or six um, and doing all sorts of orchestral stuff and tours. And, you know, I was thinking, oh, well, you know, we're playing all these, these this music, people that are, a long, long gone. You know, I was playing yeah. Rachmaninoff or Gershwin, or you know, you go even further back. You know, you go to Bach, Beethoven, all these beautiful music, piano music, and you think, well, they're still remembered. This is five, six hundred yeah. years later. You know, that's crazy. Um, how do I do that? You know, I don't want to be forgotten. I don't want to. I don't want to disappear into the ethers of time. You know, maybe at least for 10, 20 years after I die, it'd be nice if people still remembered me. <laughs> So um yeah, basically just putting together this um this EP and trying to like concentrate some of those thoughts um and ideas and trying to link together all the different themes and all the different related outputs to that. So whether that be like the trailers I put out or the music video or the artwork itself, you know, it is uh I grab it, you know, a bunch of birds in the form of a face and it's the idea yeah. you know a flock of birds you know they're never in the same position for a very long time that whole you know the concept of me existing is temporary mm. and it's like it's just there's a lot of headache that came around that and uh, a lot of kind of derealization and a bit of just like what is you know what is this what's going on but um yeah it feels good to just kind of have it as a thing and be like so, Here's all my so, thoughts and put it in a box and it's gone and I don't have to ever think about it ever again. And that's how it yeah. works. <laughs> I, I, I wonder then, you know, that it's it's interesting what you say. I wonder is it was the 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 sort of the the job of putting this into something almost like physical and sort of is that a car uh, was was that like a car thesis for you to like to finally put this into something and then you know i don't know there so there are so when you start thinking about philosophical stuff like that you know who am i where am i going am i going to be remembered it's it's all like very much up in the air did did this help to like focus it yeah yeah i think so um and it's yeah it's it's, it's kind of you know interesting how the whole thing developed as well because you know the music started off with me playing around on guitar um you know neuro dsp had started launching all the amps in and they sound great and i was like i can like record guitar at home and like mm. not have to have an expensive amp and irritate anyone i'm living with this is great um and you kind of start there and i was like well hang on i can turn this into this and you know we can start to build this theme and yeah just putting it into something physical as well i think is it's really cool. Um, I mean, I, I collect CDs. I, I mean, even just looking at my desk now, there's there's piles of stuff. Like, it's not even... <laughs> because I've got a, a big cupboard upstairs, which is where I keep most of them. Your, uh, yeah. that's, that's full at the moment. So my desk is just, like, <laughs> covered in, um, in it. And it's, it's, it's great. It's nice. Um, and I really love as well that you know, people in America have bought it, people in Canada, people yeah. all over Europe. And it's like this thing like exists in multiple continents now and probably more places than I've visited in my life. And like, that's kind of weird to think about. Um, it's in people's homes, people are listening to it. And it's, uh, yeah, it's just surreal. It's really cool. Yeah, you know, the, the music you have created for the EP is, is instrumental really but but there are samples or spoken words or uh, that help guide the listener a little bit or help like 
set the mood or whatever. Can you tell me a little bit about those elements? Uh, also, I have to ask, were you ever attempted to add vocals to Ask a Vocalist? Or... <laughs> so I was um, hugely inspired by Tosca for this project. Sadly, they broke up about a couple months ago. Yeah, um, they did. But I, you know, Rabia was one of the reasons I went from, I quite like to learn guitar to I will learn guitar and put in a lot of hours and really go for it. Um, and I was kind of, I didn't necessarily want to emulate that sound, but I just loved how Tosca was its own thing and it kind of didn't need vocals. I, I can't sing. I'm not a singer. I don't think. Um, there's material I'm sat on now. You know, I'm uh, writing this full length album um, with a couple of other musicians. and I'm sat on some new EP material potentially. And I'm trying to throw in vocals, and I'm just like, ah, <laughs> I hate sound of my own voice, you know? Um, mm-hmm. And it's one of the things growing up, I never really had any training in. So I was really focused on the orchestral stuff. I never joined any choirs, um, you know, doing French horn. I was playing a lot of symphonies and concert band stuff, and so the piano work. So it's a whole different world and skill set that um, I definitely want to explore and want to try yeah. getting that down in the future. But when it came to this release, I was just like, no, not going to happen. No. <laughs> so um, the vocals that are in there are from a friend of mine, Jenna Robinson, who is also the vocalist of Empire Bathtub. Yeah. Um, it was like a weird, spooky, I don't know, alien comedy concept series. Yeah, yeah. We had a review of their al- last album. And, uh, you know, I've been, I, I was listening to it. It's, it's quite... Uh, I don't know how to put it. It's entertaining. It's crazy. It's just yeah. like very, very, a very, very interesting listen. Yeah. Yeah. It's very silly. I love it. Um, but he has, he has ridiculous vocals. Um, so yeah, I was like, Hey, you want to do this voiceover? And he was like, yeah, sure. Let's, let's, let's do it. So um, I wrote all the, the words and lyrics and stuff trying to conceptualize a bit of stuff in my head. And um, that was where that came from. And again, I was kind of thinking, well, how have other bands done this? And you kind of have these wavering spoken yeah. word sections, you know, like um, Mike Portnoy's Repentance or uh, Dream Theater's Repentance, where you've got all of the vocalists talking about their their um, experiences with addiction and alcoholism. Yeah. You know, that's a very moving part of um, of that whole, you know, the 12 Step Suite and the album as well. Um, I was like, well, this is a cool thing. Because uh, as well, on the, on the last track, Death is Final, I was like, well, wouldn't it be great if I got a bunch of my friends on this as well? Exactly. So it's it's kind of including people that um, aren't necessarily musicians, although some of them are, um, and just kind of getting them involved. And it's like, oh yeah, my mate Steve's on my album. It's like, you know, me and Steve hung out in the pub for years and just like chat nonsense. And it's like, yeah, he's on the album. It's cool. Um, <laughs> I, I like that. I like that, that take. And it also sort of reminds me a little bit of... Um, uh, you know, Pain of Salvation B, where they had people call in, and you know, from all over the world, they people were were talking about things, and it it all turned out, you know, very touching piece of music, and so I think this 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 EP doesn't need vocals in the traditional sense, but there is like a a sort of a guiding thing there with the with the, the the spoken word and the little samples and everything to help you you know let's let's move from from you know the the team and the concept of it to to the music you know one of the traits of progressive music is of course the mixing of styles and genres and for you that evolves i feel like a little bit of like sludge groove almost like doomy parts at times um into your personal brand of progressive music would you talk a little bit about the influences that goes into your music and where they come from yeah sure so it's it's a real mix of stuff um because i listen to, to a lot of music as we've uh, recently demonstrated exactly. <laughs> um i mean yeah all the way from you know modern bands like haken to going further back like rick waitman i mean you can even kind of just about to see on my wall, we've got Haken and Anderson, Raven, yeah. Waitman, and Scar Symmetry as well, who I love. We've got a, a Mike Portnoy drumstick, and that's that one's oh, that's really hard to point. There we go, that yeah, one's yeah. anathema. <laughs> um, and just this whole like weird blend of 
of stuff. But yeah, the um, the keyboard side, again, I've been playing all sorts of stuff for years. I've got bits of sheet music from Genesis and Yes and Rush, which I'd always sit and play at different arrangements, uh, bits of Stephen Wilson as well. And yeah, a lot of the uh, sound design stuff really came from like Haken Affinity and Haken Vector. Yeah. The whole keys and synths and stuff. You know, I remember hearing Affinity when it came out. Um, and I was like, whoa, like this is crazy. There's so much happening here. There's so many little nuances, so many little bits of design, little sloshy bits. Um, and that was really interesting. If you are enjoying this interview, please head over to theprogspace.com for more reviews, articles, pictures and interviews all about progressive music. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. theprogspace.com Yeah, uh... So you already mentioned, you know, that you have quite a lot of talented people involved on the EP. So uh, would you would you mind running me through them and you know letting me know what they contributed to to the to the album? Oh. Some of them, at least. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm gonna <laughs> feed off the list. <laughs> That's probably a good. <laughs> yeah. Nobody forgotten yeah, that man. way, right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Well. Written and performed by Grace. Yep, that was me. I was on it. That's you. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, acoustic guitar by Paul Hannes. So at the end of the last track, there's a tiny little acoustic guitar section. And I did originally write and play that myself. But the um, the acoustic guitar I've got sounds awful. Mm. Um, absolutely terrible. It's so it's like 30 years old. The tuning pegs keep falling out. It doesn't stay in tune. Like I'm pretty sure it gave me like tetanus. So I got I got him to record it. And um, he's been my guitar teacher for a few years. Uh, so it's cool having him on there. Yeah. Um, drums by Andrew Scott. So I am not a drummer, unfortunately. I may have been able to do the keys, the bass, the guitars. But I can't play drums. So mm. um, I got Andrew Scott involved. And it's kind of a bit of a story there. Because originally it was uh, Gareth recommending me this guy called Andrew Scott who drummed for um, Slice the Cake, I think, a little yes. bit last year. And has has done some other stuff he's drumming i think on some other stuff Gareth's working on um i was like great i'll take that recommendation andrew scott google andrew scott session drummer first result andrew scott drums great brilliant click 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 email set it going great and um a couple of weeks later i told gareth i was like yeah i'm using andrew the guy you recommended like you know the stuff he's writing is coming out great and gareth was like oh cool yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, i need to chat to andrew so and gareth was like grace who have you been talking to? It's like, what? I see. Like, who have you been talking? I've just, I've just spoken to Andrew. He's ever heard of you. He doesn't know what's going on. And I was like, I've got like drum tracks back. Turns out in Canada, there is another session drummer called Andrew Scott. I see. So, <laughs> so, um, so I used him. And it was great. You know, no qualms. You know, came out with some really good stuff. Uh, sounds great. Recorded it all well. Um, but yeah, it's just, um, a bit uh, of a I'm, I'm, glad, man, I'm glad you mentioned the real that. Fake Andrew Scott. <laughs> Honestly, I'm glad you mentioned that now because I was also like completely sure that you know this is the guy from Slice the Cake, and you know yeah, it, yeah. there's the same <laughs> same drummer as uh, that has the Leviathan o Owl solo project as well. Yeah, yeah. That that's that's the guy you thought was you were talking to, right? But this is yeah, another Andrew awesome. Scott. <laughs> 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 well it did a great yeah. job on the album yeah yeah no it's it's not great like i said it's just uh it's one of those funny things that's uh that's <laughs> gone on um and you obviously gareth came in and did mixing yeah. so you know, gareth uh they're like the vocalist in sliced cake and Ivana yeah. and he also mixed um azure's album this year from brian angel's beaks so yeah that sounds great so, um, they, they always do a fantastic job with whatever they're involved in so yeah, um, and then we had Jonas um, coming in and do the mastering as well, who's uh, another member of Slice the Cake. So they've got a little double teaming thing going on. Um, album artwork was by Anya. Uh, all that stuff in the back and everything. Um, <laughs> I did some demo artwork, and it's one of those things where I was like, how hard can it be? <laughs> Very yeah. glad yeah. that um, I didn't, didn't end up using that. 
because uh, it was awful. And I basically sent my sketches over to Angie, and I was like, "Can you make do this, but like better?" Um, and she did, and it's great. Yeah, uh, and that's only her found through um, the images and word server as well. So uh, some fiance that was like doing stuff and i was like yeah sure i call you sam yeah that 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 artwork is really really beautiful and it and it's something that sort of sets your uh, your ep uh apart from a lot of other uh releases so for me that was it sort of drew me in uh, immediately when i saw the cover but like this this is something i have to listen to so i have to agree with you she did a an amazing job with the with the cover art yeah yeah, and it's one of those things, you know, you always get told growing up, don't judge a book by its cover. I mean, everyone does, you know. Yeah. you got to have some good artwork. So, um, yeah, no, really pleased about Um And, yeah, there's also the uh, the secret vocalists on the last track who um, I think if you go on my YouTube, I did a full video stream. There is right at the end of that a credit list. Um, and there's, yeah, a couple of, like, hidden people and faces so not only friends but a couple of people on the scene so garrison there we've got harrison from novena we've got diego tejeda from haken i managed to get him yeah. to do a little sample so there's just like just little little nods to um places yeah. of influence and, and people that help make it happen so i really i really like that as well that it's kind Some of like little easter eggs there, there. Well. yeah huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, but also, like, I've got to shout about it a little bit as well, because uh, <laughs> you, unless you've, like, met the people, you know, Diego doesn't sing in uh, in Haken, you know, you're not going to know what he sounds like unless you've spoken to him. So it's like, <laughs> you know, you got you got to mention it, I think. Yes, of course, of course. And, and, you know, that's how that this industry works as well. You know, if you if you have something that you think will sort of people will pick up on and be interested in, I think it's it's just right to to use it and, you know, get that little extra you know interest in your stuff so so i, I want to ask you about your creative process then you know are you the kind of writer that writes like quickly and then you know there's a full piece there or are you the kind of person who likes returns and and like modifies and modifies your music until it it becomes the way you want it to how how long ago did you start writing the 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 songs that are on the ep as well Wow. So yeah, I probably started writing stuff in um, June 2020, um, and I'd finished all of the recording by the middle of October. So maybe three to four months. Um, and there are a couple of breaks in between. You know, I also have a full time job. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, releasing a debut EP doesn't make you money. Turns out it makes you lose a lot of money. Who would have guessed that? <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it kind of started with guitar mostly because I was experimenting with these amps and I was like playing a lot of guitar at the time. Um, and it started with these, these kind of basic riffs and slowly got expanded. And I was like, well, I need a bass. Like I need to, I need a bass guitar so I can start doing stuff. So I bought a bass guitar and, yeah. you know, I had one a few years ago, but it was pretty bad and I sold it. So I got, you know, something a bit more proper that would sound good. Um, and I was moving with that and I was like, oh, it sounds cool if I do this and just, just kind of playing around with stuff um, until things fit in um and yeah i was kind of the drums came later again i'm not really a drummer mm. so logic uh which is the the audio workstation i use has this kind of default drumming thing in it that you can just see like four bars of drums in six eight at this tempo go and that was the extent of my drum writing um <laughs> so that's kind of how that started um and yeah a lot of the i think other than like the sort of jazzy breakdown in um the third track where there's a, le- a kind of sort of an electric piano break a lot of the rest of the keys were not added until like the two or three weeks before i sent it off to get mixed oh really um because i kind of i had a bit of a panic and i was like i've been playing piano for like 15 16 years yeah and i've always considered myself like a pianist first and you know into synths and sound design and all this kind of stuff and i was like there's none of that on here Uh oh i've got to like <laughs> shoehorn in as much as possible and like put in all these different bits um and i yeah i couldn't believe how much that elevated everything you know particularly like the second track there's two really cool since so i such a thing it's maybe my favorite track as well because it's kind of short and sweet um yeah. very cohesive but there's just these really two keyboard bits in it and i'm like i couldn't imagine that track without those it'd be so boring 
So yeah. um, it was fun to just sort of like last minute do that and improvise it. And I could do that really quickly because I'm not having to sit there and think, oh, the string's in tune. Do mm. I need to like change the intonation of my guitar? Like I'm not picking because I'm quite new to guitar, relatively speaking. I've only been playing about four years, three years properly. Um, so being able to just write stuff on piano and whip out solos really quickly was was a great help because it just it was the easiest part of the whole thing i was just like yeah like i know all my arpeggios and scales you know exactly playing stuff for ages so um yeah and then it was about halfway through all of that i was like oh i need to i need to make a theme for this and there needs to be a whole like story around this um and that's when i started writing the fourth track existence is temporary and started chucking in the, the vocals and stuff and building up, well, how can I bring the music video into this and how that looks like, you know, how's that, you know, I started scoping that out in September last year and working with um, Pursued by a Dragon, which is a theatre company my mate's been um, doing music stuff for for a little while. So I was like, let's get them involved. Let's try and do some stuff with them. Um, so it kind of just all happened at different rates. Um, but I'm finding now... A year later my writing process has changed dramatically yeah um you know i mentioned i'm, I'm sat on an album's worth of material with a band that's a much so a process you know we started writing that in june last year um and we're still nowhere near <laughs> like getting to a finished point but the stuff i've written on there is is ridiculous like it's so different um especially because i'm focusing on the storytelling and the synths and i'm not going to think about guitars and drums because someone else yeah. is dealing with all of that stuff you know it's a it's a whole different way of writing um and the same with the stuff i'm doing at the moment which is more solo stuff it's like i'm the concept is there now well before i've put pen to paper and written music down so there's this whole like it's a lot more planned out mm. um rather than shoehorn in afterwards so i think that's gonna change how i'm writing stuff as well and also attempting to throw in vocals as well and just it's amazing how yeah. much stuff's changed in the last like 18 months just creatively and musically um yeah it's been really interesting for me just to see how that's that's all changed i i find that very interesting also because you know the the almost like multimedia approach to creating music or creating you know you talk about the videos you talk about the story being important and and you know all all those parts coming together and and i remember also when i talked to the musicians from Azure, they seemed also to have a bit of the same you know ideas around creating you know a world they using the videos everything like comes together the music isn't necessarily standing on its own you know do you feel like that's a a, a way to create that you want to continue on you know exploring bringing other medias into to your your musical universe so to say yeah absolutely um yeah i've had a few late night conversations with uh galen from azure and just like the law goes so deep like you you know even if you think you've listened to that album and you understand what's going on like you don't <laughs> it's it's, yeah. it's it's crazy there's they they are creative nutcases yeah very um, much so uh, impressive i'm creative, really impressed yeah. by that yeah. yeah um i can't wait to yeah get more get more azure as they go along same same here. but yeah i i think just the storytelling thing is so important you know just even from a appeal point of view yeah you know you, you think about an artist like ozzy osbourne you know black sabbath you know first six albums crazy amazing you know started an entire genre entire political movement yeah. but it wasn't just the music it was the characters and the personalities that seep through you know ozzy's whole career you know he's he's the dude that ate the bat he's the yeah the, the whole mean mythos yeah right yeah yeah there's there's the whole the myths the legends all the people he's worked with um you know the osborns in the early 2000s which i've been watching <laughs> all of recently that in itself is a whole different way of experiencing his music and his creativity yeah and i think you see that in a lot of things the just the story surrounding music you know it's it's so much bigger than just the noise that goes into your ears. Um, and I know a lot of musicians that 
feel that as well that it's it's just so important to build a story around it um and build those concepts together and link things together because you know we we as humans we absorb things you know we've got seven different senses yeah, we have you yeah. know you got a you got a, you got to tinkle all of them you know iron maiden have got their beer you know you drink iron maiden <laughs> beer you listen to iron maiden and you read the audio book you watch the live dvd you know there's a whole experience you can have that's not just about what's going into your ears and i think that's yeah. just hugely important um and yeah i'm really looking forward to playing around with um video stuff in the future i've um yeah had a lot of good fun yeah i agree I, stuff. I, <laughs> I, I totally agree and it's it's very interesting the way you put it because of course you know i guess most of us have had the experience of like reading a book with some music in the background and then that music becomes sort of linked to that story or that in your head and also video games and and movies use you know music to great effect so why not turn that on the head you know and and you know have the music as the foundation then have all of these media as like you know of uh, yeah, building blocks to to create a, a total artistic thing. I, I find it very interesting, and I think that's that's something that's uh, especially in, within progressive music, you have a lot of tools to make that happen. So, so I, I hope to to see more from young bands like yourself and Azur and how you how you develop that. You know, I, I want to ask a little bit about your classical background because you've been mentioning it a few times. We've touched on it: the piano, French horn, right? When did you start playing an instrument? instrument and and what what is the training you have and also do you think that you're or, or well of course it does but how does your classical background uh influence the music you write yeah it's um a lot <laughs> um so i must have been i was trying to work this out the other day i was either five or six and um, when i started mm -hmm. playing piano and i was about 10 when i started playing french horn and i've covered a whole range of stuff but um you know growing up at school and everything it was very the focus was on classical romantic era kind of music orchestral yeah. music very traditional choral stuff so not really looking at i don't know why is cardi b's wap like a viral sensation you know it's it was very dated um yeah. in a lot of how it approached music um and especially because you know in my early teens i was really into electronic music i listened to a lot of dead mouse and infected mushroom mm -hmm. um and also i was into metal i was listening to ramstein and metallica um i was that wasn't in school and i was not i wouldn't say necessarily put down because of it but i wasn't seen as like you know she's not gonna have a future in music you know she's not mm. she's not part of the choir you know she doesn't know when the year ratmanoff was born and how many symphonies he's written and it, <laughs> So there's a big contrast where it's 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 somewhat been a hindrance. Um, I feel like I'm catching up in a lot of ways, particularly with guitar. Yeah. You know, I wish I could have started that 10 years earlier. Um, but I'm learning stuff now that relates back and it all it all just is building blocks. Um, mm. But you see that as well with a lot of other big prolific musicians. You know, someone like Rick Wakeman, you know, hugely classically trained. Of course, um, of course. Before, yeah. he, before he started his career, you know, because the music he was writing didn't exist you know you couldn't emulate anything um or copy what was going on you know he was coming up with with all the things he was doing from scratch you know same with um, a musician like wendy carlos who came out with switched on bark this kind of you know creative modern remix the classic songs and you see that even this year like with tension experiment three their rendition of rhapsody in blue i know i've got a lot of friends orchestral friends who would listen to that and go Oh my God! What and <laughs> what is this? They've ruined, you know, this amazing piece of music. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love it. I think it's great. It's a really fresh interpretation. There's lots going on. There's lots of creative spite. You know, you can hear the personality of all the musicians coming through. Um, and again, Rhapsody in Blue is a, a piece I've learned for solo piano before now. Beautiful. You know, there's so much going on. Um, and yeah, it's it's just. <laughs> it's, it's it's tricky to, to think about it all. And yeah, on the, the yeah. French horn side of things as well, I've done all sorts of orchestral stuff. I've played symphonies. I've played a lot of 20th century film music. Um, I played like marching band music. I've done a lot of stuff in brass bands. 
um, and a little, little bits of sort of classical jazz as well. I played in a Dixieland band for a little bit. And all of these things like just kind of build an influence. And that's, I think, mm. partly where my love of prog comes from. You know, not only my dad indoctrinating it, indoctrinating <laughs> it into me from a young age um, by giving me his iPod and being like, listen to this and always putting on Genesis in the car. Um, nothing after Steve Hackett left, though. That's his era. <laughs> um classic take there (laughs) (laughs) um so just all of those things kind of built up and built up um and again steve hackett another example of a musician you know you read his um biography that he put out last year genesis in my bed he talks about all of the classical music he was listening to as a teenager as well as the rock stuff you know he was picking up these vinyls of all of these really interesting symphonies um i think especially the early tw- early early 20th century stuff is really really interesting um you know something like the right of spring was that the birth of heavy metal i mean maybe yeah you know that yep. that piece of music is is crazy you know the 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 idea of you know the first time they played it the audience thought the devil was being summoned and were like exactly you know, I'm, yeah. sh- I'm sure that the story has been um you know a bit and experts but yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but that whole, you know, concept came through with Black Sabbath, you yeah. know, and the whole like Christian mums of the, the United States against Ozzy Osbourne <laughs> or whatever being like, no, it's all yeah, devil yeah, yeah. music and well, the, it's, the it's just this crazy. Talking in court and yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, um, yeah, well, it's crazy. I, t- I think that's, that's interesting. And, and especially found it, you know, what you said about, uh, the seventies prog rockers i think a lot of them like you said or most of them probably had some kind of classical background or classical training you you see it of course like you said in rick wakeman but like you know elp doing all their you know also the same as you had liquid tension doing now you know like recreating a rock version or like a prog version of of like old uh, classical pieces and so i think it's i think it's interesting and of course it's a, a a helpful thing for any prog musician to have influences from all kinds of music and and that leads me a little bit into into my next question, because of course you're also involved sort of with the progressive uh, music scene outside of your own music. You know, you are the founder of, of the website Proghurst that focuses on yep. all kinds of progressive music. So what can you tell me about that page and, 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 you know, how you started with that then? So again, originally it kind of also stems from the big, the big book of, of scrapbooks and tickets and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And I'm going to all these concerts you know, you see online lots and lots of people, you know, if you want to find the review of the new Opeth album, a hundred people have written about it. Yeah. How many people have written about Opeth show in the Wem- in Wembley SSE in 2016? Or mm-hmm. how many people have, have written about, uh, I don't know, Cade and Cambria playing a venue or whatever it is. Um, and the whole thing of podcast was like, it was almost also, uh, it almost started as like a personal diary of um live shows i was going to a way for me to like just keep track of like what i've been to and sort of again have a sort of concrete thing and be like this is where i was this is how i was feeling like this is what the venue was like like here's some photos like this was great they played this song Mm -hmm. and just being able to go back and be like yeah i went to that concert and that's how it started um and it was quite a casual thing for me um like i said it was just me writing stuff and again, pandemic happened. Classic. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, well, all of my ideas for content have gone because yeah. it involved going to live shows. Um, and as well, you know, I'd been going to or made an effort to go to at least one live show every month. And I had mm. a streak of over five years for that and just completely broken. So I was like, well, what do I do now? Well, and that's when I was like, well, start branching out know, into reviewing. What if I interview a couple of people and start talking to people about their music? what if I do that? And I was like, well, this is going well. Um, let's bring on some other writers, you know, let's, let's start talking to people. Um, see who wants to come on board and write. And it's kind of slowly starting to expand. Um, particularly so over the last 12 months, I've seen, you know, the views and hits and interest just go up and up and up. And it's been just cool to see not only my personal experiences with, um, progressive music going up there, but also other people's as well. So, it's yeah it's been very cool to expand yeah. that out you know I, I 
of course, as someone who enjoyed that EP of yours uh, so much, I I had on my list of questions, of course, to ask what you if you were planning another EP or a debut album or something. But you sort of already answered that uh, by mentioning <laughs> a, f- a few times, of course, that you are working on on new music. So then let me sort of like push you a little bit then and, and ask, you know, when can people who enjoy the EP expect some to, to hear some more music from Grace <laughs> Hearst. <laughs> Sorry I for being... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's very early days at the moment. Yeah. Um, and I also want to, obviously, I think as any musician does when they're working on the next release, I want it to be bigger, I want it to be better, yes. I want it to be more complicated. <laughs> so, obviously, with that, it um, becomes more expensive as well. So, of I'm course, like, of course. trying to do work and pick up more freelance and and blend all this stuff together to like just try and make it happen um and we're getting there like i said um i think it's 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 you know we're looking at late next year i think yeah again i you know i don't think it's going to be too soon um and i've also you know now the pandemic's listed i've got a bunch of trips i want to do myself as well of course um and other things i want to do you know i've got my schedule starts to get a little busier again when i want to see people and catch up with my friends and go to gigs you know i, yeah. I book tickets for um prognosis in the netherlands which i'm looking forward to you know just all this stuff i'm like i gotta get back to everything i was doing um as well as the music stuff Yes, Sorry. of course. Yeah. Well, at least that means that someone like me and others who enjoy your music knows that there is more music from Grace Hayhurst coming. Um, maybe towards the end of next year, we'll we'll see. But we'll we'll keep you up to date here at the Prog Space. <laughs> if there are news or anything from 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 you, we will make sure to let the, our readers know about it. And finally, you know, I I wanna we're we're sort of winding down here, but I. I want to mention that you are, of course, by the time this interview comes out, people will know that you are a part of our lineup for the <laughs> November edition of the the Prog Space Online Festival that's going to happen towards the end of this year. So, so how, what are your expectations for this, and what can people expect to see from from you when? Uh... <laughs> so, yeah, that's going to be fun um i when you asked me to sit the other week i was like oh god <laughs> how am i gonna make this work what can i do like who can i get involved how can i do this um and you know you were very very clear in the specifications being like you know doesn't matter how far you go you know you, you could you could sit in your bedroom and, and sing happy birthday yeah. you know just just yeah. something to to be a part of it and i was like well i could do that or yeah um because i've you know i did a little playthrough video um in fact, i think i've got a, a playthrough video going out yeah uh, pretty soon as well me, me playing bass um which is actually in an inverted way a part of this prog space thing so i'm going to be working with a couple of session musicians we're going to be getting together we're going to be having a day in the studio and we're going to try and do a live performance of a couple of the songs um it's going to be fun. This is something again I had not planned to um, to start even thinking about until next year. No, um, you know, getting together a band and attempting to see how viable live shows were. And you know, again, I was looking at doing open mic nights at pubs and maybe yeah. like battle of the bands and local stuff. You know, not exactly, not yeah. anything like this. So um, it's uh, it's been a bit of a a rush stress, but. I've got everything in place. We've got Absolutely. musicians that are down. We've got studio space that's down. You know, I've got enough camera tools and stuff to make it happen. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be tight. But uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. It's going to be really fun because I'm basically just hanging with a bunch of friends in a studio for a day, playing music, and it's going to be really fun. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, so so are we, very much so. And and if if that's what it takes for me to to you know to get new music from some of my favorite musicians, that I have to like kick them in the ass via the prog space, then <laughs> <laughs> then I'm good with that. <laughs> Please well, do, yeah, yeah. Write an article each month when has Grace released new music. Yeah, Can't exactly. Me. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, thank you so much, Grace, for being on the Prog Talks with me. Uh, you who are listening and watching this should, of course, follow Grace on her social media. There will be links in the description. I also highly recommend you to check out uh, Existence is Temporary, the EP. Um, yeah, right. You, you can listen to the EP on streaming services or even better, you know, purchase it either digitally or, or physically from Bandcamp. So, thank you, Grace, for being on the Prog Talks with me. No worries. It's been good. It's been fun. Yeah. As always, to you guys listening, you know, if you're enjoying this, please give us a like and a subscription at the Prog Space. It helps us. Until next time, stay safe and keep spreading the Prog love. The Prog Talks, produced by the Prog Space. Main host, Rune Belsvik Reynolds. Produced by Rune Belsvik Reynos, Vanessa and Matthias Kirsch. All graphics and animations by Vanessa Kirsch. Intro theme by Giuseppe Negri. Outro theme by Zach Munovitz. This was the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. See you in a week. <laughs>